Hi, this is Rob Smith from Bain Data Solutions and today's tutorial we're going to do a bit of data visualization. If you've ever seen the presentation by Hans Roslin on the health and wealth of nations, I hope you'll agree that it's one of the uh, finest uh, pieces of data, data visualization yeah, in Africa, they are I've ever seen. Here's a, here's a little clip. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact of the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! So, he's essentially set up a bubble chart. Um, not using Excel, though there are some clues in the video as to how he uses it. I'll post how he does it. I'll post a... Uh, clip below, but he's got a bubble chart and along the x-axis he's got the uh, a logarithmic scale of the average um, income per capita of a country and then on the y-axis uh, a broken linear scale of the average lifespan. The size of the bubbles represent the size of the country, so we've got uh, Japan and USA and I assume these are India and China down here and then he then he allows the chart to move along and it's it, it's an animated chart so it, it shows the bubbles progressing over time getting bigger so as the as the health and wealth of nations improve they move up towards the top right of the chart and the bubble size is Looks like they probably um, grow with as a proportion of the total world population, perhaps. But um, either way, it's pretty impressive. And um, I had a project a little while ago where I had uh, where I wanted to replicate this kind of this kind of chart. So I've set up some made up data. Um, about a fictional sales company, uh, maybe a clothes company, uh, who have four shops, and I've made up some sort of random, random sales data, or well, sort of pseudo random. I've put, tried to put some trends within it, um, which includes the footfall into the shop every month, uh, the value of sales, and the area of the area of each shop and these change over time so I think I've got about 27 months worth of, of made up data and I've put as a as a starting point you might if you had to try and represent this data in chart format the standard kind of response might be to do a couple of charts like this so one showing sales one showing footfall Perhaps you'd have a pie chart as the um, as the size of the shops are quite static, um, or bar charts because there is some some movement, and and that, that that's a reasonable approach to take, and uh, it's got some advantages in that you can see the precise values of um, of the data points, uh, you can compare easily between between the two shops but the the pros of uh, the Hans Roslin approach are really aesthetic so it looks great and I would advise that if you need a if you need a precise measure so for someone to take a considered look over the data then a line chart or bar chart perhaps might be the most appropriate um, but if you're looking to do a high impact presentation, so something to kick off a, a meeting perhaps, then this moving bar chart um, can be quite effective, a uh, moving bubble chart I should say, it can be quite effective. It does take a bit of setting up, so there's quite a bit, um, there's a little bit of code to do. It took me about half a day I think to um, code it up when I had to do it. Um, and but the advantages are that if we write the code correctly and or if we write it generically we can reuse the code for future projects so 
there's a few challenges with doing this uh, this kind of work, uh, this kind of well, this precise uh, piece of work. One of which is that the number of data points to be plotted is 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 high. So if we've got 27 months with four um, four series, so that's already what 100 108, and then we've got that multiplied by three, so that's 324, and then the 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 additional um, complexity is that if we try to plot, if we try to move our chart between these two data points, so you see that there's quite a fall off in sales between January and February. So I've deliberately put in a sort of January sales boost into my pseudo random data, then it falls off in February quite sharply. Then these these bubbles are going to move; they're going to fall right down very. Uh, clunkily, so in order to achieve a, a smooth transition, we want to um, interpolate between these two points. So we could, in theory, create a worksheet with all of the interpolated data points on. However, you're looking at upwards of 3,000 data points there. And although we could do that, the Disadvantages are that again it would be static data, so if you wanted to change the number of points in between to give a smoother or faster transition between the two, then we'd have to recreate our full data set. So instead, we're going to look at um, using an array or two to first of all pull in all of these static data points and then secondly create a a larger array which will have all of the interpolated data points in and by updating the chart directly from the array rather than reading off the values from the worksheet then we'll have a performance advantage as well.